Hi there. Greetings from the Ecole Normale Supérieure à Lyon. My name is Elisabetta Basso, and I'd like to spend a few words about my paper on Foucault's critique of the human sciences in the 50s, between psychology and philosophy. In 2013, the whole private archive of Michel Foucault was acquired by and collected at the French National Library in Paris. In 2015, Foucault's family deposited further personal documents covering the period from the end of the 40s, when Foucault was still a student, until the mid-50s, when he left France to become director of the Maison de France in Uppsala, Sweden. The fonds Michel Foucault is now composed of nearly 40,000 handwritten or typed documents, including reader notes, preparatory manuscripts of books, courses and lectures, an intellectual diary, correspondences with publishers and so on. All these documents make it possible to follow the evolution of Foucault's thought over a period of almost 40 years, from his notes and his very clearly early writings as a student, as well as his various dissertation projects, up to the gestation of the lectures at the Collège de France and the series of volumes about the history of sexuality. My paper focuses on some archives of the 50s, these documents, which comprise uh, for the most part reading notes and preparatory manuscripts of courses and then published books, are extremely rich and attest that the young Foucault was active on several fronts of, uh, at this time. In addition to psychology and phenomenology, a very big part of Foucault's manuscripts and reading notes of this period is devoted to the problem of psychopathology, its definition and the theoretical models. In particular, we learn that Foucault was a great reader of all those German-speaking psychiatrists of the first half of the 20th century who had resorted to the phenomenological method in order to renew the theoretical basis for, of uh, psychopathology. Foucault knew the totality of the works published by the Swiss psychiatrist Ludwig Binswanger, the founder of existential analysis, to which uh, he devoted an important writing in, 1940, in 1954, sorry, namely the well-known long introduction to dream and existence. Now, since uh, Binswanger's name and the names of other psychopathologists linked uh, to the phenomenology almost completely disappear from Foucault's work of the, 50, of the 60s, it seems that uh, there is a sharp break dividing Foucault's early writings on psychopathology from the works he published, he published in the 60s and in the 70s, in which emerges the archaeological refusal of a phenomenology and philosophical anthropology, as well as the strong criticism against any form of psychopathological discourse. Now, in the archives, we could recently find an unpublished manuscript of 119 pages specifically devoted to Binswanger and existential analysis, in which Foucault's interest in Binswanger's approach is finally clarified. The analysis of this text and its critical genesis could help us to bridge the gap between Foucault's early appreciation of existential analysis and the strong criticism that he later addresses against anthropology and the human sciences. Indeed, if in his introduction to dream and existence, Foucault seems to shower praise on Binswanger's theory, in the posthumous work, he criticized existential analysis insofar as it goes beyond the level of the clinical reflection towards the anthropological speculation. It is uh, precisely this uh, inflection of the phenomenology toward anthropology that Foucault will further analyze in the 60s. Therefore, my argument is that Foucault's early interest in Binswanger's phenomenological approach to psychopathology lays the foundation for the critique of anthropology and the human sciences, which is at the earth of the archaeological project. Foucault's posthumous book will be published in 2021. In the meanwhile, you can read this paper of theory, culture and society to get an idea. Thank you.